Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and this lesson we'll be looking at Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw last lesson, Paul told the Philippian believers, he says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, he says, think on these things. And Paul here is trying to encourage them to now think according to their citizenship. And their citizenship is a citizenship in heaven. It's to think with God no longer with this world system. The old sinful nature that still resides within us wants to think according to the old ways. But now this new nature, the Holy Spirit living within us, wants to think according to the ways of God. And in order to do that, uh, we have the peace of God surrounding our hearts and our minds, the Holy Spirit within us giving us guidance, we have the Word of God also that we can study and meditate upon. And as we do, we begin to think with God in all areas of our life. Now, verse 9, Paul says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So Paul again points the Philippians in the direction of using his own life as an example for them to look at, okay? And that's what we as Christians do. We observe other Christians' lives. And Paul here says, watch me. Watch how I pray. Watch how I study. And you do the same thing, okay? Now, this Greek word for do is prasete. It's prasete, and it's imperative, present, active. And it means to practice, to get into the habit of doing something, okay? So, Paul here is saying that the things which he taught them, he says, those things which you have both learned, but not only did you learn them, you received them also, and heard and you've seen me do as I lived among you, and as you saw me live my life, then you do them also. So he's saying the things which he taught them and the things which they received and the things which they heard and also they saw Paul do, they are to what? Right now. It's the present tense, prasete, present tense, right now, not tomorrow, not a week from now, but right now, they are to produce the action. It's active voice, which means they produce the action. I don't, I don't live your life for you. Your neighbor's not going to live your life for you. You have to make the decision. Okay? Prasete is present tense. Right now, you do it. Active voice means you're the one making the decision. To produce this action okay and it's in the imperative mood meaning it's very important that you do this okay <laughs> so right now produce the action of practicing the same things watch what I do Paul says and I want you to do the same thing and you know as I've said in earlier lessons before it's not just Paul's life that we are to observe but God has provided examples for us today in our church, at work, uh, our relative maybe, maybe somebody at school. God has provided an example of someone for you to look at. You, you observe their life, how they pray, uh, how they study the Word of God, how they go to church. Um, we observe their life and then we also do the same thing okay and if we start practicing other believers lives there's a tremendous promise 
from God for us, okay? Now, the thing is, is this. God never says that we are to mimic someone's life, but we are to do the same thing, all right? Now, how can I explain it? It's like, it's like baseball, all right? You have pitchers on baseball teams. You have uh, St. Louis and San Francisco and Miami and Baltimore and New York and Boston teams, right? Now, on, on each team, they, they all have pitchers. And each pitcher on those teams can throw a curveball, all right? But the curveball that the pitcher on the Baltimore team is a little different than the pitcher on the Miami team or on the San Francisco team. They all throw a curveball, but it's their own version of the curveball. And that's what we're saying. God, Paul here isn't saying that we are to mimic someone, do it exactly the same way. But he's saying, observe their life and pray like they pray. But do your own, your own version of prayer. Do your own version of, of, of meditation. Do your own version of studying the Word of God. Now, they may study for an hour a day. Maybe you don't have an hour a day. But you can do a half an hour a day, right? So it's your own. You're doing the same thing, but it's in your own version, and you're doing it unto the Lord. And if you do it unto the Lord, that's that that's acceptable unto God. That's acceptable. But the promise that God gives to us, if we observe other people and and we use them as an example and live our lives like they do. It says, the Bible says, the God of peace shall be with you. And it's not only, not only now is it the peace of God that will guard your hearts and your minds, but now the very God of that peace will be with you. All right? Now, at first, at first, when you begin to watch other believers and you glean from their lives, and God begin the Holy God, the Holy Spirit begins to minister to your life as you watch this person and you watch that Christian and you watch that Christian. You say, "Yeah, I like that. That they're, what they're doing, and I like what this this Christian's doing, and I like what that Christian's doing." And you begin to take take these things from their lives, and you begin to apply them in your life, and and you begin to form. Uh, form your life before God. At first, it's going to seem strange, and it may be difficult to follow the example of a Christian, but God promises to be with you and to help you form good godly habits, right? The habit of prayer, the habit of study, the habit of meditation, the habit of church attendance. That's right, church attendance. <laughs> going to church every Sunday, right? If you have Wednesday service, well, I never go to Wednesday service. I've only been going to Sunday services. Well, try going Wednesday. It, it can only help, can hurt, can only help. If you have time, if you're not working, if you're not busy on Wednesdays, go Wednesdays if you have a chance. Midweek service, right? You can only be blessed I mean, that's all that can really happen is to be blessed, <laughs> right? So, as we watch we be, and as we practice and do them, a, a habit begins to form in our heart. And we have this habit now of prayer. We have the ha We can't live without it now. We have this habit of studying. Maybe it's studying every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Maybe it's studying uh, uh, on uh, Tuesdays and Saturdays. It doesn't matter. But you begin to form a habit in your life. And when you form this habit in your life, it begins to be a need. You, you, you know when you don't do it. And, and that's good. That's good because that, this is, you're forming good godly habits that keep you strong in the Lord. At first, when you start practicing and doing these things, your sinful nature which craves and longs for the deadness of this world will rebel. It's going to rebel. 
you're gonna hear you're gonna have thoughts of well you ain't got time this week I know there's a TV show on it's more important it's part two and you saw part one don't miss part two because you're gonna miss it right well there's gonna be longings in your heart from the calling of this world system to not form good godly habits I'm telling you it's gonna happen you're, you're not going to want to do these things. And that's that sinful nature within you which craves the, the deadness of this world, which craves the, the sinfulness of this world, the, the godlessness, the I don't need God attitude. I can live my life. And that's the other nature within you which is trying to keep you from forming good godly habits. But, but we need to take our will take our volition and to choose according to the word of god and make good decisions and form good habits okay keep practicing and good godly habits will be formed in your heart and in your mind and you'll become a tremendous example unto the lord for someone else you'll be an example someone will be looking at you and not that you crave that but just that as you become strong in the Lord, other people will look at you. They'll ask you, how do you pray? How do you find time to, to study the Word of God, to meditate? How, how do you, how do you uh, uh, view church attendance and things? And you, and you speak the Word of God, and you share your heart, and other uh, young believers are encouraged and strengthened by your words. All right? Uh, next lesson, we're going to be getting into another section of Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 10 through 20. Okay? But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.